welcome to my channel. My name is Brienne Beebe. Today's video is a tutorial of how to make your own digital interactive notebook. So everything I do, I do it using PowerPoint and Google Slides. So let's get started. So I'm starting with my PowerPoint. I'm going to go up to layout and change it to blank. Then I'm going to go right click and format background. So now this is the part where I mention that this was the process that I used to create my digital interactive notebook. And so it's up to you to make sure that you are designing something that is unique to you and does not look exactly like mine. This is also what I've done for digital planners as well. So I like starting with a wood grain background. It just helps to give it a little bit of a more realistic feel because it looks like you're looking at a table. And then I add a shape, so I'm going to go for the rounded rectangle and just draw it in there. And the corners are pretty ridiculous. So if you go up to this yellow square here, you can drag it out and change it so that the corners look kind of like how the corners of a composition notebook would look. So I'm gonna to go to my design tab. I have a specific color palette that I work with. So I usually do this first, but I forgot about it just now. So I'm going to format my shape. I'm going to change the color so it's less bright. Um, I'm going to turn off the outline because I want it to look a little bit more realistic and so not having an outline will help with that. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select a shadow. So it's up to you which shadow you want. I'm going to go for this one but it just helps give it dimension. So you don't have to put a shadow on there if you don't want. Um, I'm going to drag this out a little bit wider. And for an interactive notebook I like to put the tabs on the top because I, that's where I have the most space. So when I did this design for a digital planner, because it's very much the same process, um, I was in portrait. And so I put the tabs down the right side here because I had more space going that way. So I'm going to duplicate the shape, layer it on top, and I'm going to change the color of the fill to white. So this will be like our paper. And I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. I want the back cover of our notebook to be visible a little bit around the edges. I definitely would have loved to do my interactive notebook in portrait, but the way that screens are, it just doesn't make sense. Like a landscape is going to fill it so much better, but go for a portrait if you prefer the portrait. So I'm going to next insert more of these rounded rectangles to make the tabs. So they're going to go toward the top. And this is the part where it takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of just playing around. So again, I don't want an outline. I do want a shadow. And I wanted the shadow to be something that you'd be able to see from around this tab, which is why I didn't go for it to be like underneath down here. So I'm going to duplicate and make more tabs. And then how many tabs you want to have is up to you. I do like that when I duplicate, it just kind of puts However, I moved this one, the other ones will go the same amount. It's a translation. So I'm going to change the color of them just so I don't look and see like this big pink blob. Now, if I wanted more of these so that they extended all the way down here, let me just show what that would look like for a minute. This is when I'd be playing with their sizes. So I would highlight all of them and then go to shape format and I would click this and that's going to lock the aspect ratio. And then I would just play with this until it looked like they would fit. And then I could move some of these down and it's okay to let it get messy because we can just align it in a minute anyway. So let me highlight these again and I'm going to align them let's say to the middle. So now they're all evenly spaced across the top and bottom. And then I'm going to distribute horizontally. And so now they are all evenly spaced apart from one another. And while they are all highlighted, I'm gonna just position them to where I want them. So that's how my tabs are. I probably wouldn't keep this much space in between them personally, but. It's just, it's just a demonstration, so it's okay if it's there. Now I'm gonna click on the white paper here and bring it forward. Now if we don't wanna click 12 different times to bring the white paper to the front, you could just go down here and say bring to front, or you could group your tabs together, which I end up doing anyway usually. 
And then if I bring the paper forward, it's gonna be in front of all the tabs. So now I see that the paper covers the tab quite a bit. I'm gonna just move those up a little. And so now I can see them better. And now if you want to add text, we have a text box here. Um, for the interactive digital notebook, I just numbered them. So I just put a number and I put one on each tab. I'm going to make sure that the fill on this is transparent and there's no outline for my text box. And so I just aligned the number to the tab by making sure that both of them are clicked. So now in this case, I have to actually ungroup. So I'm going to click on the tab and the number and then I'm gonna go up here to align and I'm going to align it to the center. Just double check down here that it says align to selected objects, which it should because I only have two objects selected. I hit align center, now the number's in the middle. You could have also done this at the beginning too if you wanted to highlight both of these and then duplicate your tabs out that way. It's just, I'd rather have the tabs spaced out first because when you have the numbers on there too, it's like this added layer of difficulty. So you could also have the number up there first and then duplicate all the tabs, but it to me is just like this added layer of difficulty. So if I want my tabs numbered, I'm going to go through and just duplicate. And now because I have one in place, it's gonna put them all where I want them automatically when I hit Control D or Command D and now I can just go through and change the numbers. If you wanted to put words instead of numbers, you could also do that. So if I get to double digits, I might have to redo my alignment because the text box gets expanded. I don't know why I keep going to group today, but I'm um, gonna go to align and center. So once I have this very basic general layout done and I'm happy with it, if I'm doing a digital planner, I'll bring in a spine. So this is something that I purchased on Etsy and I throw the spine in here and it's a little close to the edge. So I'd probably have to highlight this whole thing and move it over, but I'm not worried about the spine right now. I'm just sharing that as a, for instance. So now for a digital interactive notebook, the other element that I would have is a front cover page. So I would add it just by duplicating what I had from the back and just kind of offset it a little bit so that there's some dimension. I also would want to duplicate my slide so that I have a version without the cover and then you can add any other elements that you want. One other thing that I did on the digital interactive notebook that I think is worth showing was I added icons down into the bottom corner right here so that students had a way to get back to the front cover and back to the index and the instructional video easily. So I went to insert icons, and this is my favorite PowerPoint secret. There are so many cute icons here, all different kinds of things. So if we wanted to do like a back to the beginning back cover, um, we could do one of the arrows and we could insert it. And I colored mine gray just so that it stood out against the background, but not so much that it was distracting and then just sized it down in the corner. So the icons are fun and something that you can play with, but what I discovered about Google Slides is that when I linked this, the link popped up underneath of where the icon was and it doesn't actually show up unless you zoom out. So I would actually put this like in the top corner instead. That's just something that I found. And then you want to make sure that everything's consistent. So as I add new slides, I'm going to click over here into my slide view and then duplicate to get more slides of all the same thing. On my second page, I added an index. So I added a text box and just typed in index. And then I made my index by making a table. So I go insert table. So the table's in here. So I have tab. And then I called it topic so that students knew that each tab related to a different topic. And then when you're inside of the table, if you hit control A or command A, you can select all. And then you get options to change things. Like for shading, I want no fill. I don't want the colors there. 
For borders, I want all the borders showing just so it's easier. And then in layout, I can change them to all being centered. And then this does center from inside of the cell. So it's in the middle um, or you have top or bottom, left or right, whatever makes you happy. And if I go to home, I can change the color of the text. The top always comes out in white because it's the heading and it's always bolded, which if you want it bold, that's great. If not, you can turn that off and then you can move this to wherever you want it, resize it however you want it, but then you have your index. So that's pretty much it for um, what you have to do in PowerPoint, aside from adding in whatever notes you're going to add in. So you could add your text boxes, shapes, anything else. For my interactive notebooks, I changed the layout, but ended up taking screenshots of everything and then loading it into here. So I did it in multiple steps. So once you have something that you really like, you can go to file. My file's not gonna show because it's up too high. Um, and then where you have save as, um, go to save as template, and then you can save it as a template so that you can open it up next time and it's gonna open up and look exactly like what you have now. I'm not going to do that though. I am gonna go file and export. And then I want to export all of these as PNG files. I want it to save on every slide and I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. And so I've exported it. And then what we have to do now is create a new PowerPoint. And we're gonna change the layout again to make it blank. And then I'm going to format the background so that every slide I had from the last presentation is going in as the background. So there is nothing here for me to click. I cannot move, I cannot change anything. So this would be the steps you have to take for anything that you want to essentially be glued down onto your slides. Like anything that you don't want changed is what should be in these images. So I'm just going to use the three for now. So these are the pictures. Again, cannot move anything, cannot change anything. So think through what is going to be on these slides when you put your notebook together. And then I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna go back to calling it Presentation 6. But I like to add the word Secure to it because I can't change anything here. And um, I'm gonna put it on my desktop. So once you get through all of that, you're ready for Google Slides. I like to just close the themes on the side because it takes up space and we don't need it. Um, I go to File, Import Slides, and then I go to Upload, and I'm going to drag my secured file in there, and it's going to put the slides in automatically for me. So once we upload, we see the three slides that I had. I click All and then Import Slides. And I ignore what it says about keeping the original theme. So my slides are here. This first slide is always going to be there, so I just delete it. And now you can add anything you want into Google Slides that you want students to be able to interact with. Um, so I could add text boxes in places if I wanted them to fill in the blank. You can add any drag and drop element that you want. Students can add lines to different things. It just depends on whatever it is that you're doing. So the part that makes this interactive aside from the parts that you add in is the links in the tabs up here. So to create the link, I'm going to go to insert and I want to insert a shape and I'm going to insert a rectangle and draw the rectangle over top of the tab. So when it comes up, it's going to be this ugly little rectangle. I click on it. This is the part of the toolbar that adapts to whatever you're clicking on. So because I'm clicking on a shape, it's going to give me shape formatting tools. So I want my rectangle transparent. And if I click on it again, this is for the border. I also want the border transparent. So the rectangle's there. It's just you don't see it unless you are clicking on it. So I'm going to duplicate that shape and put it over all the tabs. The only thing that I do not like about Google Slides is it doesn't quite move the way that PowerPoint does. Like if I try to arrow these over, it jumps quite a bit. And so sometimes they're not perfectly aligned, but they're aligned close enough that your students will be able to click on them. So it's not something to worry about. And then I'm gonna just duplicate one more to cover up 
this arrow here and just resize it so it fits. And then we're going to go through and link all of these. So if I right click, I get some different options. I'm going to go down here to where it says link. And for this, I'm going to say that link one goes to slide three. I didn't put a lot of slides in, so now I don't have a lot of options. But I click three and then I click apply. And so anytime I click on this, it pops up with a thing to go to slide three. If I'm in present and I click on it, it will just go to slide three. But I like that it works either way, regardless of how I have it set up. So I'm going to actually ignore the rest of the tabs because they can't go anywhere else. But I will change this one. So this I want to be my link that goes to the front cover. So I'm going to link, go to slides in this presentation, and then go to first slide and apply. So now if you have a lot of pages, this might seem like a really daunting task, like you're going to have to go through and do this all over again. But luckily, we can copy paste. So click and drag to highlight, copy, and then go to another slide and paste. And they paste exactly where everything else was. So that is it in a nutshell for creating your own interactive digital notebook. It's really not that bad and you're only limited by your own creativity. There's so many different things that you can do where, where you can add in drag and drop activities into a page. I have a lot of fill in the blank things. The one thing that I was going to miss was being able to highlight things. So if I want to do a highlight, I go to PowerPoint and I just create a shape. And then I format the shape so I can right click and then it pulls up this over here where I have more options and I change the transparency. So let's say I do it 50% and I'm going to get rid of the outline. So now I just have this piece here and I right click on it and then go to save as picture. And because I want to make sure the transparency is intact, I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'll save it to my desktop and then I'm going to go back to Google Slides and I'm going to just drag that shape in here and so now whenever I bring the shapes into Google Slides it enlarges them so you can format this so I right click go to format options and then when I go to size um, I'm going to click this box here to lock the aspect ratio and then just play with either the height or width until it's a size that I want so now I have a piece where I can highlight things and then you could resize it here if you wish. So that was everything that I could think of. If you have any questions or if there's something that I didn't show that you have questions about, please ask them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.